Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the second problem of today's weekly contest, minimum operations to reduce an integer to zero. The problem states that you are given a positive integer n and you can apply the following operations any number of times. The operation is you can add or subtract a power of two from n. So you can make n as n plus two to the power of i or n equals to n minus two to the power of i. Now you need to make n equals to zero in minimum number of operations and you need to return this minimum number of operations in which you will be able to make n as zero, right? So there are various possible solutions to this problem and even greedy solutions would work here. But proving a greedy solutions is not easy, especially during live contest or in a live interview, right? You, you can't prove greedy solutions correct easily. So I would encourage you to uh, skip applying greedy solutions because unless you are very sure. So whenever you are applying greedy solutions, you should always think of the proof. If you are not able to prove the solution, you should not trust it because that would actually not help you to develop your skills, right? So in this particular video, we will be looking at a very simple hack to these kind of problems where you are given uh, some states and some operations to transition between these states, right? So this, this solution would be applicable to any kind, any problem of this kind. So let's start. So notice that we have some operations, right? Add or subtract to the power of i. Now, because we can both add and subtract to the power of i, it doesn't matter if we go from zero to n or from n to zero, because we can do both, right? Add or subtract. Now, if we would only do add or if we would have only done subtract, then this statement would not be true, right? But in this particular problem, the statement is true. Now, we can start with zero and apply these operations one by one, right? And reach to some states. So for example, we can start with zero. We can apply, we can add two to the power zero, two to the power one, two to the power two, and so on and so forth and reach these states, right? Now from each of these states, we can ap again apply minus two to the power zero, minus two to the power one, minus two to the power two, two to the power zero addition, two to the power one addition and so on. Now notice that I am not going to negative values because let's say if you subtract two to the power of i from zero, right? And you get negative value. Now, if you get negative value, notice that the, val the target n is actually positive. So if n is a positive, if you go negative, you always have to apply one more operation, right? So basically if you apply some operation that will give you negative, negative values, you have to compensate with another operation. So you are increasing number of operations, right? So that's where we will not ever try to go to negative values. Now, having said that you can see this is forming a graph, right? And we need to just go from zero to n. Let's say n is 12. So we are going, we have to go from zero to 12 in minimum number of operations, right? So this is a very standard problem where you are given two, we are, you are given a starting node and an ending node and you need to return the minimum distance between the two. The solution is Dijkstra. You can just apply Dijkstra on this node and because source node is fixed, you can simply apply Dijkstra and find out the minimum uh, distance from source node to this target node, right? So how like now how to apply Dijkstra? Let's look at the code. Uh, the code is simple. Initially, we initialized everything with 20. Now why 20? Because we know n is 10 to the power 5. So at max 20 step, we can always reach, we can make any, st any n because at max 20 bits can be set. So in 20 steps, we can make any n possible. So we initialize everything to 20 and then we put everything to our set or priority queue, whatever you say. And then we will iterate over the priority queue from smaller to greatest. And for the smallest element, we'll push, we'll pop it from the queue and visit all its neighbor. So in this case, there are two kinds of neighbors. One you will apply negative operations and one you will apply positive operations. So the first neighbor is 
current dot s the current dot s denotes the current node so this node from this node you are applying positive operations to go to this destination similarly second operation you can apply negative one and reach this destination so once you identify the next neighbor you can simply uh, find out the new cost previously to get to current dot s you are required current dot f cost right and from this path like let's say you go to it and eight like to go to come to it you require x uh, x length of path now from eight to nine you have you are adding two to the power zero so the new path from zero to nine is x plus one right is of length x plus one so that's what we have done we have just find out the new cost and if this new cost is less than the previous cost we will replace the destination cost with the new cost right so same thing we will do for the other case as well so this is very simple text uh, there is no nothing fancy here now once it, once this uh, entire iteration is complete you would be having the smallest uh, smallest path up till n right and what is the time complexity of this entire solution time complexity would be order v plus e log v because uh, you we, we have at any given of given point of time we have total v number of nodes in our set and we are iterating over all the edges once so order v plus e log v now notice that dijkstra is applicable for weighted graph right or basically when when the graph is weighted dijkstra is applicable but here the graph is not weighted every edge is of length 1 right and because every edge is of length 1 we can simply apply bfs as well because bfs would also lead to dijkstra the result that dijkstra will give us right again because the graph here the graph weight every every edge weight is 1 we can actually skip the extra and apply normal bfs and that would also work but if this edges would not have been uh, weighted equally we have to apply the extra for example let's say if they say that okay if you add 2 to the power of i you the you need to perform i operation so in that case these all edges would not be same the weight of all these edges would not be same and hence you can't apply bfs but here because the weight is same you can simply apply you can skip entire the extra and simply apply bfs so you can just say uh, you will apply bfs from 0 and keep on visiting nodes which are not visited so once you reach 4 you know that this is the first time you have reached 4 so this is whatever depth 4 lies at is the minimum steps you need to get 4 right so in this example from 8 also we reach 4 but because 4 was already visited from 0 we know that this path will be longer than the originally uh, originally discovered path so we can simply apply bfs as well and we can use we can use just a uh, queue to apply bfs we will push zero initially and then keep on popping from the queue and inserting the neighbors right so hope this entire solution is clear if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below I will be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.